when I say he froze on me myself. Friends, cause I can't redeem myself. Bye. Shalom, shalom. This is El Dayer from One Nation, One Power, giving all praises to the Most High, Ahaya and His Son, Yeshaya. I just want to bring a little something to you guys' attention because uh, I noticed that we are deliberately being distracted. We are deliberately, as a people, being distracted with all types of false and alternative realities coming at us from all sides. But what is the reason and the purpose for all of these alternative realities being shot at us like a cannon out of a gun over and over and over again? What are they doing? Is it about the flag? Is it about kneeling? Is it about President Trump? What is this all about? Is it about the earthquake? Is it about the fires in California? It just might be that this is about the fires in California. And everything else could be a distraction. But uh, I shared with you guys a while back that Hashatan has, has issued a decree for the extermination of the so-called black man in America. And some of you still to this day don't believe that that's a fact. But I got a little something that I want to show you. The number of so-called black men and black women in America up to this point murdered or killed by police officers. The number from January 1st of this year up until today, the 14th of October, 946 of us have been put to death by police. Whether illegally or legally, we've been killed by the police. 946. And I'm going to show you and give you the information so you can see it for yourself that maybe you'll begin to wake up from one of these many alternative realities that Hasatan is trying to put on you right now. Was this prophesied? Is this in the Bible? Yes, it is. Zechariah 11 and 5. And it reads, Whose oppressors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. And their own shepherds pity them not. Zechariah 11 and 5. You don't see one so-called Christian leader speaking up against the 946 deaths that have occurred to this point in 2017 in America, the snake. That's why I call it the snake, because it's acting just like a snake. It's using all type of uh, erroneous uh, media to keep us distracted from what's actually going on. So if I don't re ever recall a news channel bringing forth this information that over 900 of us have been slain by the hands of police in 2017 alone. And the year is not done. 946 to be exact. And the year is not over. We still got two more months to go. Is this a genocide happening right under our noses? And we are so distracted we are so brainwashed that we don't realize that with this number added with the abortions, folks, I can think of no other race of people on the planet that Zechariah 11 and 5 fit than us. It's time for you to wake up, Jacob, and come back to the God of your ancestors because you, my friend, could be one of the many of these victims 
or tomorrow. You, my friend, could be added to this list by the end of this year. Do you hear me out there? This is not a game. This is reality right in your face. Shalom.
Shalom, shalom. Don't think for one minute, brothers and sisters, that the Most High is sitting back idle and not going to deal with these nations, especially here in America, with his white supremacist uh, mindset, attitude, and uh, beast-like behavior, because I've never seen anything like this in my life, to where a people can systematically er eradicate another people and at the same time pretend like they care about you pretend like they're your friends, pretend like uh, they they right there with you in the time of trouble, but at the same time, they're exterminating you. But let's go into uh, 2 Esther chapter 15, and I'm going to begin in verse 20 and 21. The Most High says, Behold, saith God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east and Libanus to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Verse 21, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus says the Lord God. Now in verse 20, the Most High said he's going to call together the kings of the earth, the nations. He's going to turn them one against another. Is there a war coming where they're going to be turned one one against another? Exactly. That's right. Second Ezra 15 and 20 just told us that it's going to happen. He's going to turn these nations one against another for what they're doing to us. Why did he say the nations? Why he just didn't say Babylon? Because all of these nations are complicit in the eradication of the sons and daughters of Jacob. Do you hear me out there? In when, 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 if I am somewhere and I see a man executed and I stand back and I don't say nothing, then I'm just as guilty as the one that did the execution. That's what's going on. You hear nothing. You don't hear a peep from the United Nations. You don't hear a peep from none of these other countries as it pertains to our extermination and eradication. But the Most High has promised the sons and daughters of Jacob that he's going to repay these nations for what they are doing to us. It is. It blows my mind how they'll put one killing on the news here and one killing on the news there to make us think and believe in a false reality that that's the only, only the killings that happened this month. How do we get 946 murders of so-called black men and women, but yet on the news they make it look like it only is happening once a month? Do you hear me out there? They make it look like it's only happening once a month, once every month. Well, we got 946. A lot of them are not being televised. A lot of them are not being kept put on television. They're being kept under the radar. So for all of you so-called wise guys out there, just go and look up the number of abortions that have been we have participated in this year, and then add on that 946 and get back with me. Let me know if we are slowly being exterminated while we cheer for the football games. Let me know if we are slowly being exterminated 
while we watching baseball. Let me know if we are slowly being exterminated while you worried about the upcoming basketball season. While they have you living your life in an alternative reality, in this reality, we are being exterminated. Wake up. This is El Dayo from One Nation, One Power, about to bring you another video that this Gentile lady did explaining the fires in California and how abnormal these fires are. She don't have a clue what she has put her hands on and what she has identified, but I do because the God of the Hebrews has a fire that nobody has ever seen on this earth. The God of the Hebrews has a snow, has a hail, have earthquakes. He has things that nobody on this planet has ever seen, but I got news for you. In Acts chapter 7 and verse 6, the Most High has promised that at the end of the 400 years, he would judge the nation that has put us in slavery and has entreated us evil for 400 years. So don't say to yourself, that we have ever, ever, ever been treated good in Babylon ever since we landed here in 1619 because Acts chapter 7 and verse 6 will let you know that the Most High, through the mouth of his prophet in the New Testament, prophesied that we will be entreated evil for 400 years. So you can't get around that. You can't look at your life personally as one person and say, well, I'm living good. No, look at your life as a nation. That's our problem. We have been systematically cut off from nationhood by our God. Jeremiah 17 and 4 said we would discontinue from our heritage. We are the only people that when we are killed, we can identify with that brother that lives in California or maybe that brother that lives in Mississippi, not understanding that they are our brothers and that they are our sisters. But all praises be to the Most High. He's bringing back that nation mentality among us as Hebrew Israelites. This is El Dayo from One Nation, One Power. Hear what this Gentile lady and what she is showing you about the fire in California, and it is directly connected to Scripture that the Most High will begin to judge the very nation that has and treated his evil, his people for evil for over 400 years. Now, let me talk to you for just a second. What you are about to see gonna blow your mind, but you got to understand something. It is the most high God that made the trees, the grass, are you hearing me? And the shrubs. If the most high is going to burn a people for their wickedness, he not going to touch his trees because the trees didn't have nothing to do with that wickedness. The, the grass didn't have nothing to do with that wickedness. It, it was the people that he is after. And I want you to watch this video. And at the end of this video, I'm going to come back at you. Shalom. Hey guys, it's 11.30 a.m. on October 10th, 2017. And I just want to go over some basic facts with you guys about fires. The average house fire burns at a temperature of about 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't hot enough to destroy most metals and earthly made substance. And if an item is well placed and small in size, its chances of survival increase drastically. Let's take a look at the burning point of a couple of materials. Glass burns at around 20, 2600 to 2900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than double the regular temperature of house fires or forest fires. And let's see what we can find out about aluminum. Aluminum melts at around 1220 degrees. Some alloys burn a little bit hotter, uh, around 1,900 degrees. Now let's take a look at what the National Institute of Fire Safety and Safety Training say what will not generally burn in a house fire. Jewelry, because it's metal. Silver coins, because they're metal. Filing cabinets, steel cabinets, steel filing cabinets are built to last so that businesses won't have to deal with the loss of important files after building fires. Many people keep personal documents in filing cabinets, which are often kept in, in home offices. And it says here that uh, mil me silver burns around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go down to barbecue grills, cookware, some appliances, stone table, fire safe. Um, let's see, it says here about tools. 
because the melting point of carbon steel is between 2600 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit and the melting point of stainless steel is roughly 2700 degrees. So you're not going to see your barbecues melt. You're not going to see your ovens and your uh, most of your appliances. They're not going to melt. They'll be burned, they'll be damaged, but they're not going to melt. It's common to find an appliance or two that remains intact. There's chaos around there, but many appliances these days are made with stainless steel, which gives them a sleek and design durability. So a lot of people have these things, but the metal, the frame itself of these things is not going to melt. So let's take a peek in, at what happened here. Well, let me just show you some pictures here of normal house fires, what, what's usually left afterwards. There's a bunch of rubble and everything's black. Usually, usually the frames of the buildings stand. And there's a bunch of crap around the trees or in, you know, around the place, buildings. This, the frame of the building stays intact. The, the entire building does not disappear. There's still debris. There's a huge debris field after these things. You see there's like gutters and stuff. And the wood, even though it does burn, it doesn't totally burn. Now this is white stuff from what they put the fire out with, but, but generally you see that all of these houses, every one of them is black. Now this, this car was right next to a fire and it still has glass. Its wheels are still intact. It was actually, this thing actually burned, but it didn't melt the tires. It didn't melt the glass of the vehicle. You see all the rubble? This is just rubble because these, pl these places implode. They, I mean, the, after the, the structure falls apart, it collapses, but you still see they're all singed. They're all black. And even in the forest fires, the, the trees themselves are still black. And you can see, you know, you have bricks on the bottom and not all the aluminum siding or, or, or vinyl siding melts. Look at these, these, the structure, the outward frame of the, of, the, of the houses still stands. But that's not what we see in these crazy forest fires. The entire things just disappear. And there's, there's very little explanation for it. Now, this was in... This was a USA something wildfires. And this is, this is a new trend we're seeing where the entire building just disappears. There's absolutely nothing left. And that's what we're seeing again here in this. In this. And uh, this is becoming a growing trend, guys. There's no explanation for it. I want to show you a couple of things here that should really, should, should be visible to the people with eyes to see. Here's the build, here's this neighborhood before. And I want you to look, you guys, there's absolutely nothing left. You don't see any part of any of the structures anywhere. This isn't possible. There's something else going on here. Something else going on here. The entire, entire building. Everything, everything's gone but the trees. Now I want you to notice here that there's absolutely nothing of the structures left, not one of them. The trees are still here. That There's debris, but very, very little debris. Where's the stuff that was in all these houses? Where's the stuff? Where, where's the roofs? Where's the, where's the brick? Where's the, where's the granite countertops? Where's, where's the appliances? Where is everything? How come only the trees are standing? This is just not right. And then look at the fires that are still burning here. Look at these fires. These look awfully familiar, don't they? Let's take a peek because Dr. Judy Woods has spoken about these be be before. Other things about the weird fires. I can't call them regular fire because I don't know that. The weird fire just denotes that it's not something that you know for sure what it is. It's glowing, but the paper doesn't seem to burn. If this was glowing because it's hot, it'd have to be at least, you know, 1,200 degrees centigrade. Aluminum melts at a little over 600 degrees centigrade. It's not a puddle. This aluminum is not a puddle. So what she's saying is that this is a certain color, and flames reach this color at a certain temperature. But the fact that it's glowing that color and the aluminum isn't melting tells you there's something else going on here. And if you guys have ever seen a Dura log, that's what this reminds me of. How, how, like... If you've ever burned a door log in a fireplace and poked your fire poker into it, you realize these things just kind of break into a million pieces and they continue to glow. 
they're not actually still on fire and they're hot, but they're not the same kind of flame that you get out of out of a out of a piece of wood. There's something significantly different about the composition of a duralog. And these things all seem to be burning like duralogs. It's a complete and absolute burn. There's nothing left of a duralog afterwards. And that's what we're seeing in these fires. Now, I'm not saying everybody built their houses at duralogs, but there's something really messed up going on here. Puddle, so uh, how hot can it be? This igloo cooler and the plastic trash can are not melted. The paper is not burned either on the ground. So what is that color? And another weird thing about this, right across the street over here is Burger King. And inside they're flipping burgers, cooking burgers for the firefighters, not serving to the customers. But And then the building across the street was missing. It's just a weird sight. Now this van is also interesting that, you know, you get all this, this something looks like it's on fire, Weird fires there. This van down here has a fire on the side of it. What's burning? And if you see falling debris that was on fire hit these vehicles, why didn't it hit anything else? And how's it you know, under the vehicle? It's just very strange. And we're going to see this here in just a second. I'm going to keep playing this video over here so you guys can see that that's exactly what we see here. Watch this. Notice that these, look at, see how they're all just kind of burning, like, I don't know what, and these cars, I'm going to back up here, these cars are all smashed. They have no glass, they're all smashed. Watch this. All of these, they're like smashed to hell. Look at this, and what's the heck, what the heck is this? What, what's going on here? How did this car all catch on fire? It's got no glass, it's, it's all destroyed, and, and what is this beam? Look at this. Look at this. The car looks like it's been run over. You know, what is this? What is what is burning here? What is burning here? This is the exact same thing we saw on September 11th, you guys. There is something very messed up here. You know, with September 11th, one of the most suspicious variables was that there was nothing but dust. The, 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 Dr. Judy Woods describes it, as she saw it, as being dustified. Things just disappeared. It looked like they caught on fire in some parts of the building, but, but you see this billowing grayish white smoke and if you guys look at the, the long distance photos of these pictures you're going to see that's exactly what we see is the exact same kind of smoke i'll do another video on that i don't have those queued up right now but here's the point look at this what is burning here what is burning here because you're going to see that there's twigs all over the place there are twigs everywhere the twigs didn't burn but yet the entire building the, there's nothing left of these houses come on this is just very weird this shouldn't be this way some of these are pines. You guys, let me, let me just point out, some of these are pine trees. Pine trees are so flammable that you, you light a cigarette too close to them, they go, shoop. These still have needles on them. How is it possible that the houses in between pine trees could ignite to desolation, so to absolute be dustified, and the pine trees in between them stay 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 intact. I can't offer explanations to this, but I can tell you that there's a recycling bin. This is a plastic recycling bin um, in between a car that is completely fried and all these houses, and there's a recycling bin that did not melt. There's something very unusual going on here. This is not normal. This is very scary. Look at this. Where is all the, the stuff Where's all the glass that, that constituted this building and the materials? Where's all the glass? Yep. Toasted. He's right. It looks toasted. Look at this. There is the, the, whatever, whatever, com, whatever comprised the structural integrity of this building is entirely disintegrated. It's gone, you guys. It's gone. Whatever held this building up is gone. There's rubble, but this looks more like a bomb. Now I want you to look. If this was a fire, why didn't this burn? This is this is this looks like something I would break up and put on top of one of my bonfires here. I would use this in my in my fire pit. 
what is it? It's just a, it's like a tree. It's tree branches. This is, this is kindling. How come the kindling didn't burn, but the entire structural integrity in the glass is gone? I'm so happy the football field didn't even get touched. Now that's what we're teaching our children. I want you to hear what this kid said. I'm going to play it one more time. This is a frightening observation this kid made. I'm so happy the football field didn't even get touched. He's so happy the football field didn't get touched, but yet the entire enti the entire structural integrity of his entire high school is disintegrated, and he's more concerned about the football field. I know that probably brings him great comfort, and it's probably the only place of normalcy. So to that extent, but I just want you guys to realize what what we're doing with our children. <laughs> this is what they're thinking. I don't know. They gotta at least clean it up first. God bless this child and his family. You guys, what has happened here? This was a boat. Here's a boat and a trailer hitch. Let's just take a peek back one more time. I'm just realizing what this thing is. This is a boat trailer. This is the hull of a boat. I wonder what this was. That is the hull of a boat, folks. Look at this car. It's like bent in half. The frame of this car is like bent in half. And yet, look at these trees are still standing. Every tree around here, every tree, every shrub, every bush is still standing. There's no way, there is no way that this is normal, folks. What is this? This is a shape, this is a frame of something. These were homes. Where are the toilets? Where are the, where's the glass? Where's the metal? Where's the, Shalom, Shalom, this is L.I.E.O. for One Nation, One Power coming right back at you. Now let's, let's prove according to the scriptures what this Gentile lady was describing is actually in the Bible because if the Most High is going to persecute us, he's not going to persecute us with what we call natural. He's going to show his power with the supernatural and with abilities that man cannot accomplish or do. But if man attempts them, you must understand scripture in Psalm 17, verse 13 and 14, the men of the world are the hand of the Most High in the earth. You got to understand that right now, brothers and sisters. We're living in the last days. Now go right fast to two scriptures I'm going to give you. Isaiah 29 and 6 and Psalms 83 and 15. First, we're going to start off in Isaiah 29 and 6. You see, the modern-day Christian church has been taught a little bit about who they call Jesus, but they have not been taught about who the world calls Jesus Father. He has a Father. Hello. And his Father kills and makes alive. Let's go. Psalm 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited. I'm going to read it just like it says. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with great and, and with earthquake and great noise, with storm and tempest, and the flame, and the flame, and the flame of devouring fire. How do you know that this is not ordinary fire? Because ordinary fire does not devour. Everything it makes contact with. This is the flame of devouring fire. Devouring fire. When something is devoured, it means it eats up everything. If a lion attacked the man and left no remnants of the man's hands, fingers, or nose and ears, he devoured him. He ate up everything pertaining to that individual. That's what this fire has done in this Gentile lady's video, it devoured everything it made contact with. Now let's see if this is the Most High God. He said that we shall be visited in the last days by him in thunder, in hell, in earthquake, and devouring storm. No, my friends, the Most High God did not visit you last Sunday. 
better come on out of here. The Most High God told you how he visits the earth in Isaiah 29 and 6. We been brainwashed, hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray in modern day Christianity by not knowing who Jesus' father is. He said he will visit the earth in the last days according to Isaiah 29 and 6. Let's see in Psalms 83 and 15. Go with me to Psalms 83 and 15. This is the God most of the world don't know. Psalms 83 and 15. Oh, come on. Let's, let's start at verse 13. Psalms 83, 13. Oh, my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind, as the stubble before the wind. In that video where we see in stubble, let's keep going. As the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, verse 15. So persecute them, so persecute them, so persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Brothers and sisters, what you witnessing in California with your own two eyes is a visitation from the most high God who the people call Jesus is his daddy. His daddy is letting the earth and the world know. This is just the beginning. Get ready. Your football is about to be done and over with real soon. That's right. When a major disaster hit this place, there'll be no more entertainment. Oh, you're hearing me out there. This is El Dayo for One Nation, One Power, letting you know this, my friend, is the hand of the Most High God visiting the earth. Oh. Hell decided basketball's on its way. That's right. Fires like you've never seen before is about to hit this place. That's right. We are about to be persecuted. That's right. The whole world is following Satan. And the Most High has had enough. It's his earth. It's his grass. It's his car. Everything on the earth was made from his natural resources. Everything on here belonged to him, even the people. So, the creator of all of the universe and everything you see is coming back to put an end, to put an end to man's wickedness. Shalom. Wow.